Hello. Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome back to Sit in It for a Bit on a Sunday with Arna and Carlos. And who are we? Your hosts. We are Arna and Carlos. And we are back with yet another one of our podcasts. Yes. We call it Sit in It for a Bit. It does not necessarily mean that we're going to sit and knit all the time. We may do crochet, we may do all sorts of other things. If we can do something, because we can, we're not good at multitasking. We're not good at multitasking, that's <laughs> so, true, yeah. So you can sit and knit. And we're also very good or, at doing a little bit of everything. So a little yeah. bit of knitting, a little bit of crochet, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But anyway, it is not a knitting podcast per se. This is just the podcast that we have been doing since the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, we are knitting designers, in case uh, you're wondering if, you, if you've stumbled upon us for the first time. Uh, we do a lot of knit design. We come from the fashion industry. Uh, we have been working, uh, collaborating very closely with Rowan uh, for the past, uh, it's almost 10 years now. Yeah. Um, actually, next year will be 10 years since we launched our first Regia sock yarn yeah. as so well. We do a lot of different things. Yeah, so we do all sorts of things and we've just had a little meeting today with our friends over at Lewis and Irene. Yeah, because we also do... We're doing the fabric text, design. Fabric design, yeah. textiles. So plenty, so. To, uh, plenty to work on, <laughs> plenty to do. Today has been a little bit of a hectic day uh, yeah. with lots of uh, things to get uh, done. Because we're going to be leaving um, on a trip, so we've had to uh, get the house in order for that. And we have a carpenter's building, and it's very windy outside. Very windy. So they had to leave around 12 o'clock, yeah. like in the middle of the day, because it was too windy, because they're working up on the roof. Is that and ladder secured? Uh, that one. That's is... the one I was talking about. Oh, I didn't see that one. Ah, okay. Because that's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, I put down another one. <laughs> no, no, no. I think we need to put that one down. There's three ladders out there. Yeah. Outside. We love uh, tormenting ourselves with renovations. And uh, now we realized uh, why not do an extension? Uh, actually, we do need the space. Uh, this house that we live in, we live in Norway, in case you don't know. And it's an old train station. We've lived here since 1999, actually 2000 was when we moved in, yeah. in June, um, but we bought it in 1999 and it's an old station, but it's actually a small house. Um, and there's, no, there's like no normal things like... Yeah, there's no uh, real... Like in a normal house, people probably have a place for the washing machine or things like that mm. and we don't have like that. a little laundry room yeah so and we have very big issues with storage space which we don't have much of either and if you don't have storage space your life becomes chaotic you need to yeah. you need to have space and you need to put the things actually we have a big the right storage space. place but it's not, it's not the same thing it's not the same because it's not uh, insulated no so it's a big storage house from the railway yeah. times and so what we're missing we're working on that also yeah so what we're missing here pretty much is a lot of closets wardrobes uh storage space uh laundry room you know things that a lot of people have that we don't have and so now we're building this extension um which is going to be an additional bathroom as well because mm. we only have one um, that'll be nice to have a second bathroom. It would be very nice. And then a little space up for Arne on the top. Um, Arne because has been... I, I've been dreaming about mm. a, uh, what you call it, a tower, mm -hmm. a house with a tower. Yep. And we don't have a tower, but I think we should call that room the, the tower room. Well, you're going to get windows, <laughs> so he's going to get a full view of the lake on frontal. And then you're going to get side views of the gardens, yeah, both of them. It would be very nice. So you will have... Um, you will have three windows on three sides, okay. which I think will be nice. And you will get that tower feeling that I think you're Yeah, because the you're roof is of. like this. Yeah. What do you call that? Yeah, it's going to be a, it's a sloped uh, roof. So on the inside, it's going to be sloped like that with a beam yeah. where we will install some lighting. And I think it will be so much easier because we have so, always so much work to do and mm. we're working on so many different projects. Yeah. So. I think now I, I start fresh in mm -hmm. a new room. So there will be, I'm going to go to the thrift store and get more chest of, uh, not more, one more chest of drawer. Is that the word? Chest, chest of drawers. And organize stuff I work on. And yeah. then what we're not working on, that goes into the storage house. Yeah. Because there's a lot of space in the storage house, but it's... Um, it's cold. Yeah. It's not insulated. That's so, true, yeah. And you have to have things in the plastic 
boxes because you never know there can be mice mm, and stuff you never know moose but yeah so uh, we've got a lot of things going on and uh, the fun thing about this is it gives us an excuse to do some redecorating as well yeah. not that we need an excuse we've been redecorating uh, this house all the time <laughs> i think we changed the paint of the rooms and so many times so many times yeah. but yeah we're going to do um, one space that arne is moving out of we're going to build closets in there. There's going to be a whole wall of And that is your project. Wardrobes. I decided you should decide everything in that room. Yeah, that's going to be my project. We're doing a row of wardrobes, we, which we really need. And then it's going, to be, um, it's going to be a dressing room slash guest bedroom, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um, and that's a south-facing room. I am thinking of... Farrow and Ball's Borrowed Light, but I haven't checked yet, so I don't know. But it's a very pale blue, um, which will probably look really nice uh, with the sun mm. from the south. But we'll see. I'm going to go for a red color, I think. Yeah, I like, that. I like the one that was more like um, terracotta. Yeah, it's called uh, Earth, Red Earth, I think it's called. Yeah. So I, I'm going to try Sorry. that one. Oh. <laughs> I murdered a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I killed it. It's not coming. Yeah, um, yeah. Earth red is is yeah. very pretty. It's very, it's a it's a nice um, it's a nice shade of kind of like a terracotta. It's got a little bit of an earthy tone yeah. into it, but it's also um, red. And I think that it's going to look really nice on a on a west. Yeah. Well, and actually, I, 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 and I like to have different colors in every room. Yeah, and you're actually going to get an exposure on on um, three sides. So, uh, light. So you're going to get the western exposure, yeah. but you're also going to get a southern expo exposure and a northern. Yeah. So you could put any color, really. But I think it's going to be a nice. It I, be nice. I agree with your choice, Arne, on the color. And I think we, will use, we can film sit and knit for a bit up there. Once and, it's done. And yeah. another film, mm. like other YouTube, like the other Sundays, because yeah. it will be very... Oops. What, what was that? My phone. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Where was it? In my pocket. Okay. And I'm wearing sweatpants. <laughs> I'm only dressed from here up. From there down, I'm wearing sweatpants. Yeah, nothing. Um. <laughs> well, well, a little bit. A little okay. bit. Yeah. What was what was I talking about when your phone? We're talking about the the color. The, yeah, the color. The color. Yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna frame the windows with bookshelves. Yeah, that would be really nice. That would be nice. And then so. we're doing the, um, the laundry room in arsenic green, I think. That's the color I want. I think, you know, you can go crazy inside a, a laundry room because it's not a room where you're going to, you know, you're not going to sit there um, all the time. <laughs> no. It's going to get... Hopefully it's, not. It's going to have a washing machine, a dryer, one of those pulley maids, you know, that you can, you know, go up and down where you can hang clothes to dry. I'm going to paint the walls arsenic green, I think. And then I'm looking at some striped fabric, some white and red uh, stripes in, That's like in that, different sizes. That's like the Swedish fabric, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. That's exactly what I want. I have, don't we have that on the wall? Up, you know, I found these fabrics up in the attic in my brother's mm, house, my yeah. parents' house, which is my brother's house. And that was pieces from, pieces of fabric that probably came from my great-grandfather's yeah. aunts. Some of them are... Yeah, they're very nice. And it's... These fabrics, they have like... Um, they have different size... I mean, it's white or, or kind of cream or beige. And then they have stripes in red in different, mm. in different widths. So there might be a, a wider stripe and then next to it a little bit more of a narrow stripe and then another... And they have a name. Yeah, Sweden. it's a special fabric. Special name. And the funny thing is, I've had this vision of this laundry room in my head all the time. It's got these <laughs> arsenic... Green, Fire Ball Arsenic. It's kind of like a mint green, very strong. Yeah. Um, it's got these white and red uh, striped fabrics. Um, and it's got a checkered floor as well. Maybe white and red or, mm -hmm. or white and black. It could be either or. And you will have, a, what's it called? South face? No, east? Uh, south, south exposure. South facing window. Well, I will, yeah. So there will be it's, a lot of sun in there in yeah. the winter. It'll be nice and sunny, yeah. And the funny thing is, I have this vision in my mind, and I want it to be that. I don't want it to be anything else. I want a, one of those kind of, you know, plastic floors, like a linoleum, linoleum floor or a vinyl floor, mm -hmm. because it's, it, it's a laundry room. You don't have to have the fanciest things no. there. And we went to this company, and they kind of, without asking us, they made us this proposition of a laundry room. 
which was going to cost... Uh, <laughs> is it you, know, cost you can't ask those people for these things because... It's ridiculous. They, they just, what they pull yeah. out. The cabinets, like... and there's not many because it's only going to be 2 meters and 20 <laughs> centimeters wide. You can hardly move around in there. Yeah. You, you have to walk in and walk backwards out. But the cabinets alone, uh, according to their price, were $10,000. And I'm like laughing because I have a vision in my mind and it's like this. It's got a sink and then you've got your, your washer and your dryer. They're next to each other. Above that, you have a, wood, a wooden counter. And then underneath the wooden counter on the, on the bottom, you have a rail. And on that rail, there's a curtain in white and red fabric so that you can cover your machines when you're not using them. There's a curtain on the window. Could be a Roman blind, but could, it could also be just a little. You fringe, can also have like a chest like of a chest of drawer under no. that wooden thing, so you can have. Yeah, maybe a little cheap, uh, a cheap from a from a from a vintage store. Yeah. Cheap chest of drawers under the uh, under the the wash basin, and then the the walls are shelves, and they are made of very simple wool. Sorry, wood with metal bars that you paint the same color mm. as the walls. So the, sh the shelves are going to be in arsenic as, as the walls. So it's pretty much very simple uh, utilitarian kind of room. Yeah. You're only going to do washing and uh, drying there and storing some, uh, some things on a shelf with a little pulley man. And a big sink if we yeah. want to wash some big things. And like... this is not going to cost $10,000. <laughs> no. I think I can make this... <laughs> With, what with about it? that lazy sewer, or what you call it? that one? That oh, the pulley made. The pulley made. Oh yeah, that was that another they one. They offered us one, so, so, and that one cost fourteen thousand Norwegian. Yeah. Kroner. So there's a pulley made that is a very uh, traditional British one. A pulley um, made, not lazy Susan. No, it's not a lazy Susan. It's a pulley Susan. made, and that one in England, and even here, you can get it for about hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars or something, and uh, the one they wanted to sell us was uh, fourteen. Hundred dollars, which is ridiculous, really. <laughs> For six sticks yeah. of wood and so, a rope. So we're talking twelve hundred, twelve hundred dollars in cabinets and pulley maids that I can probably do. I can probably do this for I don't know, for uh, I don't know. I could do it for Did a I lot tell less, four hundred dollars or something. Did I tell you about the guy, the the thrift store where I bought the chest of drawers that is still there? Yeah. He said that he get all his stuff for the store from an old man who has um, a big storage house with three floors. Sounds like you. <laughs> you don't have three floors. No, but you do collect. Uh, yeah, but this guy, he has been collecting all his life. And I guess he's selling stuff to this other guy. So he, I, I don't know if this other one sold things. Maybe I don't he, know. he was just a collect. He collect stuff, mm. and he had nice things. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of nice. So things. he said the guy who had the store here said that if there's something we need, just uh, send a picture of something similar, and he can fix it. He can it. find it, yeah. Because this guy yeah. has so many things. Yeah. Maybe he has one of those. Maybe he does. Yeah, but a pulley made is very cheap yeah. compared to the one the the company wanted to sell us. And I think in the end of the day, I can I can pull it off for. Four hundred dollars, the whole thing, hmm. uh, you know, not including the washer and the dryer, which we already have anyway. But I can pull this look off for four hundred dollars and probably make it look nicer than yeah. than <laughs> cabinets. I can make it look really, uh, you know, infuse it with a lot of personality okay. and super easy. And it reminds me, you remember the first kitchen we had? Yeah, we get used to, uh, what you call that in here, Hubbell Bank. Yeah, one of those carpenter benches. A ben yeah, we used that as a kitchen counter. Yeah, we just had like a big piece of wood, like thick yeah. wood plate on top, a yeah. board. And then we had loose drawers. Yeah. And then we had curtains to cover it was the, very the loose drawers. Homemade. Very. Yeah. But it it worked. And people, it was very nice. People came and they were, oh, your kitchen is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm, are you sure? Like, <laughs> you don't know what's under. <laughs> but but it, it was actually quite nice. Yeah, and then it had a it had a stove that was uh, you know like one unit. It was yeah. a metal, very old fashioned stove. That was stove. an old one. It, because back then I, I, I had an apartment in Oslo and when I bought the apartment there was an old stove and mm. it's probably from the 50s yeah. or 60s and I couldn't throw that away. It was very nice. It, it was, was very nice. nice. So uh, the, the, this was a really nice kitchen at the time. I mean, of course, we wanted something better. Mm. Uh, but now I feel that 
we can go back to that kind of basics with the laundry room. Yeah, I think that would be nice. And I promise you, we're gonna make it look amazing yeah. and I'm sure you're gonna love it. And I'm sorry. <laughs> much better. Much better. <laughs> the, the light is coming and going because yeah. it's a, a lot of clouds today, but it's sunny. Yeah. So the sun is coming and going and, and lots of wind. Windy. Lots so, of wind. But I was thinking like up in my room, the tower room, mm. uh, I was dreaming about a day bed because I saw a really nice one in the thrift store, but I don't think there's space for it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you should buy more furniture until the room's done so <laughs> no. that you can kind of, you know, get <laughs> a, a little bit, a get idea. a little bit more of a feel for what the room needs before. <laughs> Did we ever show the stairs I bought? No. The ladder. But it, they were about this big, which is why I never saw them before. The ladder is bigger. It was about that big. Yeah. I think we have to bring it in on the next about internet for a bit because it's beautiful. It was very nice, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't, I mean, I was, you know, when you mentioned it that time and I had no idea what you were talking about. I, I saw in my head a big something one. as big as that easel you bought. Yeah. But now I need a bigger one because I'm going to frame the window with mm. bookshelves. And it's, uh, it's quite be nice. high up in the ceiling. I can't reach the books on top. It's going to be, I think it's going to be nice. It's going to be yeah. really nice. So, of course, we're very excited. So much so that we've been speaking about our renovations yeah. for 16 but minutes. We can speak, speak about something else. But look, because I found this one today. Oh. Remember this one. Oh, yeah. This is an old pillow that we made many years ago. Hmm. But when you decided to be a pillow collector, you started pillow hoarder. to hoarder. We, we did find out that we don't need this one in the house anymore. So It's very pretty, though. But I was thinking I should um, take this apart and reuse them. Mm -hmm. Because I think they're a little bit too big. I want to do something more uh, like thinner. So. I'm going backwards now yeah. so people can see it. There you go. As a, as a, it could be cool as a blanket, but I'm gonna make, we're gonna make a new one together and we're gonna mm. reuse these fabrics. Mm. Looks good on you. It's very pretty, isn't it? Yeah. I like the colors. But I think we should mix it with, when, when this, the, our, our collection is coming, we showed this one before. It, when, is, when is this one coming? End of September. In end of September, the collection, our fabric collection is coming, this one. And then we will mix some of these fabrics with the old fabrics. Mm. Because we want to make something in that, uh, what's it call it? Log? Yeah, this is the log cabin log thingy. Log cabin technique, but we will make it more thin. More and I like it that one... I think it's too big. Yeah, it's nice that one side is darker, the other is lighter. Yeah, and I want to do a because I want to do a quilt like this. We, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a quilt. And today, since I don't throw away stuff, I found this. This, this is old bed linen sheet, or sheet. old sheet. So and I, because you saw on this one also when we do when we do this quilting, if we do the log, uh, no the oh, log cabin, log cabin, or if we do a crazy quilt, we always work on on cotton. Mm. As backing. As, as a backing, because it's so much easier when you sew them to the pieces together, mm. working on this one. So I think for this one, we have so more than enough yeah. for, uh, for uh, a new quilt. And, yeah. and I was thinking, let me see, 20, I was thinking 23 or 24, let's do 25 centimeters each, but then it's more than we need, I mm. think, because then we have something to work on. Yeah. So, and the good thing with this is, 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 is basket weave. Mm -hmm. so, oh, you mean the, the, the way it's woven? Yeah, the, this one is basket. It's uh, satin. Satin, so. So there's two ways of weaving. It's basket weaving is called satin, and then the other one is called percal. Yeah, so for right. the, I don't, I don't percal I, is, I should know this, I even. Yeah, percal is you have three threads this way, and then, and then the, the the horizontal thread goes over yeah. three threads and but then the basket, down. The, the, this one is the easy. It's one over, one under, one over, one under. Yeah. So that's because the, the reason why I like this is that, see? Yeah. You just rip it up. It's so <laughs> easy. It's so nice. Mm. The sound is nice. Sounds very really nice. Yeah. <laughs> so we've come up with this idea. We've been talking about it before. Uh, we did a, a, a video about it. I was going to do this quilt with a star on it, and now I changed my mind completely. <laughs> I want to do a log cabin like this, yeah. but I want to do it with different kind of recycled fabrics. I'm looking at kind of 
old shirts that we don't use yeah, anymore. When we get these, our fabrics, I think we can mix, we can mix a, little a little bit. bit. Yeah, mix a little bit. But I'm thinking old shirts, old fabrics, old ties that we could get yeah. for, uh, you know, like, like $1 cost each. cost nothing in the local thrift store. Cut the ties up, these beautiful silks, and have them mixed in the... Um, in the log cabin quilt and then do all the squares do one side one side light yeah. like this and one side darker um, and that could look pretty amazing this and then, is the size that's a nice size. you should work on this one so then we, very nice size. we just rip up so we have a pile of this mm. from this old sheet and then we can start when we get the fabrics so i found a sheet today with a lot of holes in it that i told you to throw away i didn't i, I should have thrown it away so what did you do where did you put it? It's uh, it's uh, on hold. Yeah, that's I what I mean. It's, it's gonna go in the garbage. Next time I want something thrown <laughs> away, I think I have to go do it myself. <laughs> do it because I, I had a feeling you did not throw it away. But this you can't throw away because this is this comes very handy. Handy, yeah. Oh yeah. When you do the quilting. Yeah. So I think um, it would be nice. Yeah. So yeah, we're launching this fabric uh, in September with Lewis and Irene, a British. Uh, company they're also pretty much present in the usa so our fabrics will be available in america as well um, and if you're interested you have to talk to your fabric shop already now and tell them to take it in so um it is very nice it's kind of the norwegian forest dream with the pine cones i'm and looking the forward to get this magpies and all the things i'm gonna play with it yeah it's gonna with be nice it's, it's gonna be really nice and so. uh and yeah, tell your, your, your local quilt shop to get our fabric, please. <laughs> um, and then you can do, and here are a few designs on the back here that you can do as well with our fabric. So. And you know, on the last sit on it for a bit, we showed a crochet project we started. And this morning I, I almost freaked out because suddenly I remembered I had this embroidery lying and mm. I, there's a yarn. I didn't have a lot of it, but I'm using so much in this embroidery. Mm. So I, I took it out now so I don't forget about it. Oh, okay. It's this secret project. I won't tell you what it will be, but this is how it looks now. Mm, it's very nice. I'm looking forward to finish this because... It's quite think, modern. Yeah, and you don't know what it is yet. But it will be well, so, know. F you know, but don't tell anybody. But it's funny, I mean, uh, you keep doing all the dead ladies projects that you buy and then you start something like that, that is quite... I'm making my own project. It's I very can, beautiful. I can, can you show it again? It's, I can die from this one. Yeah, this is pretty beautiful. What you... Hmm? You can die? <laughs> no, <laughs> Maybe please. this will be my unfinished project. No, I hope not. <laughs> well, it is. No, but you've already done all this, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, yeah, it's... There's a lot done it's, already. Uh, it's quite... Something. So mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be an artist now. Oh, that's I'm gonna a good be career a, for you. I'm gonna be an embroidery artist, mm -hmm. and when this is finished, I will put it um, yeah. in an exhibition. Yes. Yeah, so and I will apply for the art exhibition. You know, mm. you think I should do that? This is very art. Did you want to talk about this book? Is it that why the book is here? No. I didn't put well, the book there. It's very coincidental because this is a book that we got at the National Museum after seeing um, this amazing Sami artist uh, called Britta Marakat Labba. Um, and she makes, she's an yeah, incredible artist. But I think the first time when I started this project, it was after we went to the, the Biennale. Mm, yeah. And because but that, you were inspired by her, among no. others. She was displayed there. Yeah, she was displayed there. So I was probably inspired by her. But there was a lot of embroidery mm. in that uh, art exhibition and also knitted pieces. Yeah. And there was more than we normally see. And then I was thinking, oh, that's something I can do. So you paint with yarn. I think it's And that's what funny. Britta Marakat Laba does. There is an exhibition right now at the National Museum and it's going to be there until the end of August. So if you're coming to Oslo, uh, within the next month until August, uh, you really have to go to the National Museum and check this out. This is a breathtaking work. It's textile art, um, uh, you know, the very best, as best as it can possibly be. So and there's she's, like embroidery and there's a, also quilting. Yeah, like and she's a, Sami, she's a Sami artist. So the, her, her, um, she's part of the indigenous population of Norway. So her work is a lot uh, about 
their life, the life of the Sami people. Um, but is she nor I think she, maybe she's Swedish. See, I think she is. Well, she's Sami. But she's Sami. So, so uh, they can be all over. They can move uh, from one country to the they other. They have another. They have Sotmi. Isn't yeah. that the name of the yeah. Sami country? So, uh, but anyway, her work is sublime, and she's been. It is been... very beautiful, and if you Oops. if you see us on Instagram, we also posted some pictures from mm. the exhibition on Instagram. Yeah, here's a really nice so, one. It, she's a, she's really good. Yeah. So go check out our video on Instagram, and uh, yeah, here's a pull-out piece. If you hold that, yeah, and these are all applique and embroidered. So they're yeah. all textiles. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. Unbelievably beautiful. This is. And she's uh, she's really deserving of her um, success right now. But we're not doing that with quilting. No, 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 no. I think we're gonna stick with the, the log mm. technique. And no, but when you said hexagons. when you said in your new life you were gonna become a textile yeah, artist, I'm, I'm, yeah, I immediately I immediately thought about and, her. And my new life starts as soon as this is finished. Mm. Yep. <laughs> okay. Huh? Hello. Yeah, you'll display that. <laughs> I just got caught up in this beautiful. No, put it uh, away. No, but I just want to show. I just want to show my favorite. Oh, here it is. Well, that this one is, is this is without doubt uh, the best. The my most favorite piece from the museum. It's um, it's birds, and then these birds become police that are going towards a um, Sami a Sami tent, uh, tent thing. Um, so she's yeah. It's it's very very mm. strong and it's very beautiful. But we are talking about books. Now I'm going to show you what I found a few, probably some months ago. Because I collect these things. Mm. And I got two of these. This is... Mm. This, oh. <laughs> Whoops. This is all magazines that I collect. And sometimes you can find them and they made them into books. Mm. This is from 1925. And it's funny, it's the same company that we use as a travel agency yeah. for our uh, it's trips. It's Aller and Aller's Family Journal, mm. and they also have the agency that we work with. Yeah, they, that translates to Aller Family Journal. And I, don't, I, I put some marks in there. Let me see what, I, what, what, what have caught I, your attention. What have I found here? Oh, yeah. Mm. So. The usual. I, I think we did a video on this also. See, you can build a house or a village or things, but this, this I copy and then I put them on cardboard or cardboard because I won't cut Sorry. the magazine. I found a needle on the floor, very dangerous. Where's that? Is that one of the needles I've been looking for? Probably. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have it. Now I have it, but and see here is also some old arts and crafts, a lot of inspiration. Things are falling off. All yeah, time. that's my the marks. And I'll show you one more thing. This is fun. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> Paper dolls. Yeah, and then what you do is you um, photocopy them yeah. and then, or print them, scan them, print them and cut them. And put them on mm. cardboard. Yeah. And here's another thing. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, this is, um, Actually, this is an embroidery technique that looks like knitting. And we actually, we have an old piece in our stash. Very nice. With yeah. this technique. I like that a lot. This one up here. It's very cool. Mm. So, um, it's probably have a name. Mm. It's called uh, Kelim embroidery or... Yeah, Kel Kelim. Kelim. Kelim embroidery. Kelim. 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 It's kind of like Kalim, like the carpets, right? Yeah, the probably, Turkish. probably the name of the whole piece. Mm. But that stitch is actually quite fun to yeah. to work with yeah. because we, we t I've tried it once and it's kind of fun. And so, did, didn't you buy a few of these books uh, recently? I bought two, this one and another one. Mm. This from twenty five and the other one was nineteen twenty three, I think. Yeah. But then we also have a pile of these that we haven't... Yeah, you love that magazine. I think it's... Uh, there's so many nice things. There's a lot of strange things also. You have to remember this is 1925. So there's a lot of strange yeah. things. But there's the, the, um, the drawings and the arts and crafts stuff. It's very 
interesting. Very nice, yeah, absolutely, so, yeah. I think it's fun. So anyway, the other family, family journals, when Arne finds them, he buys them, yeah. that's for sure. Well, we uh, went to Alder to the travel agency and we had a meeting there and we had lunch. <laughs> and remember the bookshelves in the lunch room? Oh yeah, you just felt like... <laughs> oh, they had, <laughs> they had yeah. all of them. <laughs> it's like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't no, like... They have security in place, security. you know. <laughs> So oh. they wouldn't have let you leave with no, them. No. But uh, no, it was it's it's a nice it's a nice kind of magazine, very inspiring and all that. Yep. So it's nice to see the the you know what a family journal would have looked like in 1925. Yeah. It would be very different from what it would look like today. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of creative creativity going on there, but a lot of things that you kind of have to figure out yourself. It's kind <laughs> of like. Uh, Here's an idea, figure it out yourself. But Nowadays, but, there's instructions for uh, everything. But some of these magazines, they even have like the, the manual or how to build a little mm. cottage in your garden. Yeah. And, and there are some garden furniture, which is really nice. And now when we do the carpeting things here, the building, we can probably have a lot of scraps, yeah. like pieces of wood. I'm very excited about Talking that. Talking about pieces of wood, you remember we went when we were in America. We went, went to Hudson. Yeah, I took a picture. Yeah, we were there of, recently yeah. in the end of Mar March. And in the antique store, we saw a Christmas tree in wood. That was very cool. Yeah. I took a picture. I'm going to make one. I, mm. Actually, I found the uh, wood now from the carpenters, and I'm going to make. It was very nice. I think it was actually and quite easy to do. Yeah, very nice. I, I'm going to. I think we should have one of those. We can use it for Easter as well. Yeah, maybe we can do an episode on that if you guys think. That's a good idea. You want to see it. how we make the... It's like the Christmas star mm. you made. Yeah. So that would be nice. That would be very There's nice. There's so many yeah. ideas. It's Lots like... of ideas. And we had a meeting today. We had a Zoom meeting with the um, Louis and Irene uh, people. They're very nice. It's a family company. It's run by Ben and Hannah. And they are siblings. Uh, Hannah is the creative director. Ben is the managing director. And Louis and Irene, I believe, are their grandparents. I don't know. I think they're, they are, yeah. No. Um, it's something like that anyway. Um, but they're very sweet people. Um, and we had a very creative meeting today about our next yeah. we fabrics. Have, no, now we have so much to think about. Yeah, we're going to do a Christmas line, of, a line of Norwegian-style yeah. Christmas fabrics. And well, then we we're going to do talk another... We about it. We can jinx it. No, I mean, we just say what we want to do, and then, you know, we'll see if it comes out. <laughs> if we have time. The deadlines are so, so short. Yeah, but it was funny because we, we had this meeting today that has been on the, in the planning for a while. We, have had, we had it planned uh, since at least well, for two weeks now, and mm -hmm. then we didn't tell them that we were going to go to London. So we've actually just been to London. Uh, we spent the weekend there, and, and we got home a few days ago. Um, and what was funny was that uh, Ben, the managing director, um, who, we, who we met today, uh, we just randomly w w ran into him uh, as he was taking his daughter and her cousin to go see Frozen. That is kind of cool. You hardly run into someone you know in London, especially you know, you're from Norway. Right, yeah. Like, we don't have a lot of people we know in London. Exactly. That, so that, that was, was kind of, whoa. But, you know, they were going to the musical... Um, uh, Frozen, which is in the West End, and that's Covent Garden, uh, pretty much, or, or very near anyway. And we were in Covent Garden because we went to see Swan Lake, and we stayed in a hotel in Covent Garden. So we were actually staying around where we met. Yeah. So it was very, it was very kind of, um, you know, in the all of a sudden, oh, hey, what are you doing here? Kind yeah. of like, so couldn't believe it. Nice. It was nice, yeah. And so, then I realized that because we went to Benjamin Pollock's, as we always do. <laughs> You can't go to London um, without going to. And we have this knee, We have this nephew. He's very creative. Um, he's only five, and right now he's not very interested in school. But he loves doing creative things. And uh, we actually met him before we went to London. And I told him that we'd get a theater from Benjamin Pollock's that yeah, we so can build can together. Build. And you should have seen his. He was so happy when I said because that. Because we gave him one from John Soames Museum. Yeah. Which he built the last time, or the time before when he were here, and he was so happy. But I hope we didn't get the wrong one. Because, you know, he's... I don't know. We got him frozen. <laughs> so we're going to build this theater, and it looks quite easy. And that was before we met Ben. And yeah. And he went to Frozen. Yeah. What is it with Frozen right now? I don't know. Let me see what's in there. But, it's a theater. But I say that people now come on, on a holiday to Norway to see 
Arendal. Aaron, uh, in English, Arendal. Arendal. Yeah, I heard that on the radio. They, that's where people go if they want to have some frozen experiences in Norway. They so, go to Arendal because the, that is Arendal. Arendal in Norwegian. The irony of it all is that Arendal is a very typical summer town in the south <laughs> of Norway. South. It hardly snows there. There's hardly ever any snow in Arendal. Oh, this is cool. Oh, okay. He'll be happy Look, with this. So there's like... You can probably open it like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's this drawer with stuff. Okay, he'll love this. I think he, we should not open this one. This is for This him. is for him to enjoy when he comes to visit us. So we have to... It's mm. always nice to have these little things lying around when kids are coming. Yeah. So, so anyway, people go, people uh, believe that Arendal is where is Frozen... Arendale? Yeah, which is Arendal. They come to Arendal. And they look around and they go, where's the snow? Where's everything frozen? <laughs> this year they had a lot of snow, I think. But well, this year was an unusual year with a lot but of there's snow no rain everywhere. Here. But there's nothing there. And usually it, there hardly is any snow in, in no. Arendal. Uh, it's one of the most expensive places to have a summer house in Norway. Because it's by the water. It's uh, very fancy. So that's Arendal. Yeah. Arendale. Arendale, yeah. yeah. It's so much wind out there. Yeah, and there's flappy things. That's like this this thing they have under the paneling. Mm. It's, it's blowing like crazy. So so I see you've got some lovely uh, granny squares that are... Um, yeah, I was thinking like because we have we have this granny squares that we made. This, this pattern is out now. Yep. And because... I, don't, I think we said this many times, when we do crocheting, we don't sew them together or we crochet them together anymore. I can show you this. This is something I did when I was a little, was a little, oh. but tiny. I made this one and you see, I just stitched it together. It's not very nice. This should be washed. It's almost. Yeah. So th this is something I made many years ago of scrap yarn. And nowadays we do crochet them with a yeah. wide with just one color very wide. Yeah, sometimes we do a wide stripe and sometimes, like on this one, we crochet them together yeah. in a different way. So maybe I can show if it's possible. Sure, yeah. On but this anyway, one. these is these are really nice. If you could show the grand, both of them, just show them. Um, this is a half or a quarter. Yeah. So. And, and we've done a pattern now called the uh, Eidun for a, um, for a blanket. And you can get that at arnacarlis.com um, in our web shop. There's the uh, Eidun which is the granny square. And then we've done six knitted um, cushions with florals, yeah. uh, a few in intarsia and a few in, in color work that are really beautiful. So go to arnacarlis.com and check out our new patterns, seven patterns. Um, and we're going to be releasing the crochet tablecloth uh, quite soon, probably in May, mm. as well as that hexagon that we've been showing you uh, previously. So I'm going to show quickly how we crochet them together because if you do sewing or you I think you'll have, sorry but I think you'll have to explain it yeah it's I'm difficult to show it because it. in the corner there are two groups of uh, trebles I think mm -hmm. that double started trebles yes okay. and there's a chain of three that's the corner of the of the square so when one corner meet another corner you do the first group then you chain one Mm -hmm. Then you take the one you're joining together, yeah, and then you you chain one in the same corner on the other one, mm. and then you do you chain one, and then you do a single crochet around the chain on that corner. This is difficult, and then you chain one more, and then you go back to the one mm -hmm. that you're joining, like go back to this one and then you do the second group of double crochets or trebles yep so so that's how we join the corners where there's a chain of three you chain one you mm. do a single crochet around the chain on the meeting square and then you chain another one and you go back and you finish the group yeah on the sides where there are chain Two. You see, there's the chain two there. So now this should be a chain two. Then we do one, and we loosen up the, that the yarn, and then we go in between the trebles on on the one we're joining, and you pull 
the yarn through like this. Then you tighten it up and you do a, another chain, the second chain. Mm. And then you go back and do the double okay. crochets or the trebles. So this way you don't have to sew it later. You just crochet them together on Very the last nice. round. And it gets, uh, you get a much softer blanket. Oh, you do, yeah. And then you have like a collar that, yeah. you, that kind of, you not, you, so then you can do, what you can do then is you can do all your squares completely different, you know, like completely different colors. But then because you're using one color to join them, that ties it all in together yeah. and makes it cohesive. Which is really nice. We also have another technique where we do a, a wider stripe, but we didn't use that on this one. No. On this one, we used the um, the chain, the, sh the chain one that you take off the needle, mm. pull the yarn, pull it under the chain two on the other one, and then you chain the, yeah. the second one. So it will look like. So the joining look like this. Very nice. So you see, they meet like that. Hmm. Is it easy to see that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. If you want to see a tutorial on this, we, we could do that also. We could always do a tutorial, yeah, of course. Because I don't think a lot of people have started to do this. I saw some, some videos of crocheting on the local newspaper website, and they were doing um, the crochet thing. Hmm. They went... Oh, like, like a single crochet or...? Yeah, like you do, do just the single crochets up yeah. between. Well, that works. It I works. mean, it all works, really. But, but this is kind of softer. Mm. You get the same thickness on everything. And so, then we mentioned uh, in the beginning of this podcast, we were talking a little bit about the companies we work for, Rowan and Regia. And we've got uh, one of our sock yarns here from Regia, uh, from the Regia design line that we do. This is Lofoten. Lofoten collection. And it's really cool because if you knit, um, if you knit a sock using this, you get a really cool kind of Norwegian style kind of um, design. And then you've, you've got the different colors that we have done, mm. uh, like this one. And then when you crochet them, I mean, it is so much fun because you go on the round. Yeah. And it's and almost like splattering paint all over it. It it's is like you so just cool. Wait for the next color to yeah. pop up. It's very so, very fun. So, so I think this is going to be a project on the go for our garden tour. I think it should be this that. year. Yeah. Um, we usually give away a little bit of the sock yarn when we do our our garden tours. We're doing one in England in May, and I think everybody's going to get the uh, the sock yarn and maybe a crochet pattern. Yeah. So we can do the crochet along on the bus as and we go. I, and I think this one we joined in a different way. Yeah, this one you join it with uh, so that there's uh, no. holes. No, yeah. I, I think this one was with um, chain three. That becomes oh, yeah. chain one and then like on this one. The yeah, same. yeah, you're right. But then we did the two, two double crochets mm. and then we take and pull the yarn and pull the yarn through in between two on this one. Mm. So we join them in the middle of the double crochet okay, gotcha, groups yeah. as well. And then yeah. the, the same as the other one with one single crochet and pull the yarn through mm. and make another single crochet. Yeah, I, I think that was the technique we used on the scarves. Right, yeah. I was thinking of the other one, the one that... Now that's the yeah. one where you do, you crochet You make loops. Uh, like this yeah. and it becomes holes in. And then the... you go back and you do loops again, but where there's chain three, there will be chain one. As Single crochet around the chain and the chain one. Yeah. So there's three different ways we have. Kumiopme, what's that in English? We've uh, thought of. Thought, thought, figured out. Figured out, or, yeah. So yeah, yeah, crochet. Just because we don't want to sew. That's tr true, yeah. <laughs> so crocheting, crocheting um, with a sock yarn like this, making granny squares is a great project on the go mm. when you're in a bus. It's the same with socks. You can knit a sock anywhere, you pull it out and just, you know. But this is actually making scars of this. It's fun. I think that is so fun. Yeah. And I think have to, I have to, we have to make scarves yeah. in every color. Before so, we did teddy bears, but we haven't done that for a while. No, but I love scarves. the crocheting. I mean, the sock yarn can be used for so many things, not yeah. only socks. So, so there you have it. Um, and it comes out nice. You, and then you can put, you see there's a little blue there, and then mm. you can do the next one, you can move yeah. the blue. And then you can figure out where you want to yeah. put it, yeah. So were we going to show this as well? Yeah, 
because we, we went to England, to London, yeah. and that's one of the places we like to go, is the Dennis Severus house. Yeah, let's see if I can pronounce this correctly. It's mm -hmm. Spitalfields. Spit Spitalfields. 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 Hospital, right? Yeah, actually, I, I was thinking spit Spitalfields, and Spitalfields. then I was thinking Spittle. Isn't that like a hospital? Mm -hmm. and, and then I found a video on YouTube and there was this man talking about spit, spittle fields and it was the, like the grounds or the gardens or the fields or something around St. Mary's Hospital or something. So, so there you go. So hospital, spittle. Fields. Spittle, spittle fields. fields. Hospital. So the hospital fields of the St. Mary. Yeah, so hospital becomes spittle. Yeah. And we have that in, Nor that's also an old Norwegian word. It is, yes. Sp spital. Spital, yeah. that's the same. It is, spital. yeah. Maybe it came from the Vikings, you never know. I mean, everything. I don't think they had hospitals. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe they had another thing. And Give then them they, beer yeah. or mushrooms or something. Yeah. And then it went bananas. Mm. <laughs> anyway, we love going to spittle fields. Um, we're very interested in design, interior design, architecture, and we love Georgian architecture in particular and there's areas in Spitalfields that are um, Georgian they have um, houses from the early 18th century mm -hmm. they're very small they've got cobblestone streets Fulgate Street is one of them and that's where you can visit Dennis Severs house mm -hmm. which we love um, and uh, there's something very pleasing about Georgian architecture um, it's very plain and very symmetrical mm -hmm. it's quite beautiful yeah. actually and this guy Dennis Severs I think he was from LA he was yeah. like a very eccentric in, uh, American who moved to London and he he decorated this house and he lived in the house by candlelight. It was uh, and it was uh, the fire only firewood like there was no mm. electricity. So the house was heated, 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 heated with wood and only candles. So we booked the silent night, which mm. is really nice. And we've been there before. Have we done it before? But. You walk around in these rooms mm. and you're not, you don't speak. Yeah. That's the rule. Don't speak and then you can enjoy the interiors yeah. and you can listen to the sound because they have noise, like mm. you can hear the sound. So anyway, probably if you are, uh, if you are from London, you might know this. If not, this is a, a place we would love to recommend uh, if you're coming to London for a vacation. So here you go. Here's Dennis Sever, S-E-V-E-R-S. -E -E All you need to do is Google Dennis Severs and you'll see the, and, the house. And there was a really nice video on YouTube. I don't know if you can put a link to that if we have time. Uh, I don't think we may. We, it may not work maybe, because we we're leaving. But if, if you... But anyway, Dennis Severs yeah. house, Google, Google it and it will come up There's on YouTube. There's some nice videos on YouTube. And, and you can get to the website where you can book. You're not allowed to take photos, but we bought the postcards. So um, we thought we'd show you a few so of the... So this is one of the rooms. It's so beautiful. Yeah. All the stuff in, in the house. There's very beautiful little vignettes like this. You know, there's British porcelain, Staffordshire, um, all sorts of beautiful little things. And these are some of the things that belong to the imaginary family. Yeah. He created because an imaginary family, but actually... It's not really an imaginary family. It's a historical family. It's a family. historical family, but they lived, They owned. They owned it. Yeah. And so the the Folgate Street, the houses in Folgate Street are from around 1715, 1720, 1730. Um, they were all Huguenot silk weavers and mm -hmm. merchants yeah. uh, who lived there. Um, so it's all about um, So they fabric. used to live there back in the days. But yeah. He so, created like right. this feeling that they were still alive. So when Dennis Severs bought the house, he created this. This is all his creation. And the story is that it's the Jarvis family. Yeah. And he was uh, the, the owner of the house, the, the one who built it. And he was a, a, a silk uh, yeah. fabric merchant. Um, and yeah, so it's all about his house. And uh, when you walk into a room, the feeling, the way they want you to feel is that the family member who was in that room had just left it. Yeah, because and then there are like in. smoke coming out of a pipe or their half-eaten food. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's I love this one. This is, uh, cool. this is a tile mm. uh, of Gilbert and George, which has absolutely nothing to do with the 18th century Georgian interior design and architecture, but it is in the house. Yeah. And it's it's the ni that's the nice thing. There's some it's like a time capsule, mm. but one that wasn't frozen in 1730. It kind of kept evolving. But what's nice is that love you, this. You come, yeah, that's beautiful. That's the monkey, the on, monkey the on the bed. 
But when you walk in the room, it's like in the evening, it's quite dark. So you have only the candle lights. So when you walk into a room, you actually have to stand there and get used to the light before you see things. Mm -hmm. So I think I like this time I saw things I've never saw before. Yeah. Here's another nice beautiful thing. vignette from the Victorian room. So there's a room with Victoriana and it looked like this. Yeah, that's a beautiful it's Beautiful one. wallpaper and then all that fabric. The Staffordshire dogs, and not there, the sorry, not the fabric, the wallpaper. The beautiful green color on yeah. the walls. You can't see this when you're in the house because it's so dark. Yeah, so it's by candlelight. So it's nice that you could actually have the cards. And the, this is allegedly this is allegedly Mr. Jarvis, <laughs> and this here is Lady Saint John, whoever she was, probably one of uh, Dennis Evers' uh, creations. Anyway, it's a really nice place if you like uh, architecture and interior design. It's a perfect place to mm. visit. It's very beautiful. Get a lot of ideas, inspiration. Um, one of my favorites, there was no postcard of it, but one of my favorites was down in the basement. There was a little oh, yeah, kitchen cabinet. and there was a dresser. Yeah. And it was full of quite beautiful uh, porcelain and a lot of it. Um, it's, it's very nice, but you see new things all the time, yeah. so it's very nice. There was an article about this in World of Interior not long ago, mm -hmm. I think, or maybe it's long ago. I just saw it somewhere in the house, but I don't remember where I yeah, saw it. I don't remember. We'll have to look it up and see if we can find it. Anyway, highly yeah. recommendable if you are in London. Hmm. So this podcast has now uh, come to an end. We've got to pack and get ready for a trip that we're going to be doing. And the sun is and coming and the sun is and coming going. and going and it's <laughs> bothering our eyes. So we're going to leave you now and we really hope that you have enjoyed this episode. And if you have, please give us a big thumbs up, like and comment uh, because the engagement really helps us. And if you need a tutorial on, on this, just let us know. Put it in the, can, in the comments do down below and we will do it. It's not easy to show like this way yeah so consider becoming a subscriber the Arne and Carlos family grows every day and there's a lot of fun things for you to enjoy lots of old tutorials and uh, we are going to be we're going to start recording again in June uh, we've had kind of like a break um, and we've been doing sit in it for a bit every other week and every other week we've been doing I don't know some something from <laughs> Oslo or a tour here a tour there but um, we plan on getting back to doing tutorials again so keep your eyes peeled for the new newly recorded tutorials. And we have a few projects we're going to start, yes. and but they probably take long before we finish them. But yeah. it, it it will be nice if we can. Start we're going to do that and show you the progress. And we plan to go back and do uh, more knitting tutorials as well as we did before. So all of that is coming back again soon. So keep your eyes peeled and please don't leave us <laughs> now because you know we are going back to the tutorial thing. Um, yeah, and if you would like to become uh, a member uh, of our YouTube channel, there is a possibility. All you need to do is look for the subscribe button on our channel. Next to it, there's a join button. You can join and get a lot of extra content, including emojis and badges. Um, there are shenanigans going on there every month. We've got um, live streams with knitting help and 15 minute catch ups uh, every week. Yeah. So, um, and if you're on the mailing list, you will have the news first. Yeah, always so the news put first. Put yourself on the mailing list. Yep. And uh, yeah, this is it for now. Yeah. Thank you for watching. <laughs> we will be back with a regular episode next week. And the week after, we will be back with a new sit in it for a bit. So take care. And until then, toodaloo. Toodaloo. Bye. Bye.